I have no announcements, so we'll get started with questions. Julie. Thank you. Um, the Libya report that the administration sent to the Hill yesterday seems to have only increased some of the anger and criticism among members of Congress. And Speaker Boehner says he still wants an additional legal rationale for the U.S. involvement in Libya. Are you planning on sending him anything by tomorrow, as he's asked, or are you satisfied with the response from the report? Well, two things. First of all, we have, from the beginning, consulted regularly with Congress more than 40 times, and uh, 41 at least, if uh, you add uh, yesterday's substantial report that uh, we provided to Congress, which included our legal reasoning uh, with regards to the War Powers Resolution. So I don't anticipate further uh, elucidation of our legal reasoning because I think it was quite clear, uh, and I can go through that with you if, if you like. I think, um, uh, and, and, and let me just say that we absolutely respect Congress's uh, interest in this issue and desire for consultation and answers to their questions, and that's why we have been so responsive, uh, including with the substantial report that we provided yesterday. Um, I think it's noteworthy that the views expressed in the Speaker's letter uh, stand up in, in contrast to the views uh, he expressed in 1999 when he called the War Powers Act, quote, constitutionally suspect, uh, unquote, and warned Congress to, quote, resist the temptation to take any action that would do further damage to the institution of the presidency. Uh, I make an observation about that because I think it is worth noting in, in the current context. So do you think Speaker Boehner is playing politics now by I trying to... I simply think it's important to know what his views were then. And what's important about that, too, is that this was 1999 and he was, he had concerns about the actions that then President Clinton was taking in the Balkans, and yet, despite those concerns, urged Congress to resist invoking the War Powers Resolution because of the potential damage it could do to the institution of the presidency. So I think that uh, it, the, the context here is worth noting, that is all. And, uh, you know, I, I think that our legal reasoning, which we provided to Congress, is, uh, you know, quite complete uh, and stands uh, alone and doesn't need uh, uh, any addition. If I could just switch to Afghanistan quickly, do you have any update for us on whether the president has met with General Petraeus or plans to do so today or tomorrow on the Afghan withdrawal? Sure. Thanks for the question. Um, uh, General Petraeus uh, was here yesterday. The president met with uh, his uh, national security team, including General Petraeus, uh, to uh, discuss Afghanistan, to uh, review the broad array, array of issues surrounding the drawdown that will begin in July of uh, 2011, next month. Uh, and uh, he will c consult further with his national security team and, uh, of course, including General Petraeus in the, uh, in the days coming and forward. did the General provide his recommendations for options for that drawdown? They discussed a range of options. Uh, as I think the General has said in the past publicly, that, that uh, uh, this was a, a question of options, plural, and not option, and, and that conversation will continue. Yes, Karen. I'll follow on uh, Petraeus. When does the President hope to make a decision? <clears throat> Well, I, I will uh, cite the president who said soon, so that I, I don't have a, uh, a specific date for you. I don't have a, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, get more specific than soon. Obviously, the, the operative date here is July of 2011, so since the uh, policy that he began to implement in December of 2009 envisions and calls for the beginning of the drawdown of this surge force in uh, July of 2011, Obviously, it will be in time for that to happen. And what is the process from here? Is there going to be a series of meetings, um, or well, is he just going to reflect on what? Let's let's step back a little bit. The the uh, he meets regularly with his national security team, Afghanistan, for uh, important reasons, including the presence of a uh, hundred thousand U.S. military personnel is uh, frequently on the agenda when he meets with his national security team. So these are conversations that uh, occur with some regularity. He. Uh, as uh, in answer to Julie's question, he did meet uh, with his team yesterday, including General Petraeus. Uh, those meetings will continue. There is no process that is similar to the one that the President undertook in the fall of December of 2009 to do a deep dive and review of our strategy in Afghanistan, because that process was uh, designed to produce the policy and the strategy that the President uh, forged and announced in December of 2009, and that he has been implementing ever since. He and the team have been implementing ever since. This is this discussion, these meetings, and the, and the result, which will come with his announcement, are part of that implementation process. Shifting gears, how worried is the White House about the Greek crisis and what its implications might be for the American economy? Well, I think we have said that the uh, 
it, we obviously are monitoring this regularly. We, we consider it uh, a headwind, if you will, in terms of the global economy and therefore the, the domestic economy. Uh, so we're monitoring the situation, the developments in Greece closely, and we are in regular communication with our European counterparts. We continue to believe that they have the capacity to deal with this, and we believe it is completely within their capacity to do that, and that they will. Uh, so far, Greece has made significant progress uh, in terms of reforms, but it is important that the Greek government uh, carry on with uh, the fiscal measures and reforms uh, that are you know, frequently under discussion uh, with the EU and the IMF. Yes. Jay, the uh, Congressman Anthony Weiner is expected to resign in the next half hour or so. Does the White House feel that this closes the chapter? Does it allow you to focus back on jobs, et cetera? Well, we never stopped focusing on jobs. I think when the President was asked about this, he made clear that you know, he expressed his opinion, but he also made clear that this is uh, not an issue that he has been focused on because he has obviously much more significant priorities. And, uh, you know, I don't really have anything to add to that. Has the President spoken to him in recent days? Or not that I'm aware of. Okay. And um, can you, uh, yesterday, uh, Congresswoman uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the DNC chairwoman, said that Democrats now own the economy. Do you agree? We all own the economy. We all work together in Washington to devise policies to improve uh, the economic situation. I think what uh, the Congresswoman was uh, referring to is the fact that the turnaround that we have seen, the turn, the change in direction reflected in the fact that when the President was sworn into office, we were losing 700,000 jobs a month, and for the last uh, just six months, we've gained a million jobs in the, uh, I think, 17 months or 15 months, it's been 2.1 million, uh, reflects a change in direction for the better. The fact that we were uh, contracting severely as an economy by something like 6.4 percent when he took office has been uh, reversed and that we have grown for seven straight quarters. Uh, we believe that the actions that we took in early 2009, uh, some of them uh, controversial, some of them very difficult, uh, have been responsible uh, or have certainly helped produce that change in direction. Uh, a change in direction does not mean an arrival at a destination. Uh, we are not where we want to be in terms of the economy, in terms of job creation. That's why the President is so focused, why he spends so much of his time devoted to uh, discussing the economy with his advisors, talking to outside uh, folks about their ideas, including his uh, Jobs and Competitiveness Council, CEOs and other leaders in the economy, for their ideas about what we need to do to continue to grow the economy and create jobs. In the six years since President Obama came to Washington, including his Senate career, there have been any number of politicians who have undergone scandal. Um, I can only recall President Obama saying or suggesting that someone should resign or that if he were that person, he would resign uh, with Congressman Anthony Weiner, who, as far as I can tell, has not actually committed any law-breaking as far as has been disclosed as of yet. Why would President Obama choose to speak out on this issue and not, say, Congressman Rangel or Senator Vitter? Well, I, I, I'm not sure I can make the comparison for you. He was asked about it. He didn't come here and announce it or anything. He was not looking to comment on uh, the situation, as he made clear in the follow-up question uh, that was asked by Ann Curry in that interview. Uh, this is not something he has had the luxury to focus on. He has been focused on other issues, the economy, jobs, national security, Afghanistan, et cetera. Uh, However, I think he made clear that he agreed with Congressman Weiner that the act, you know, that the behavior he exhibited was inappropriate, that he had embarrassed himself and uh, obviously his family, and, and you know, asked the question. He responded, but I don't think he was looking to make a particular point uh, beyond that. Simply responding to the question. How does he feel about Senator Vitter and well, Congressman yeah, Rangel's behavior? I haven't discussed it with him. I don't know. Uh, in recent uh, weeks, Republicans have been attacking President Obama. Uh, for, in their view, uh, seeming to be out of touch with the economic woes of Americans, whether it's uh, Mitt Romney issue, issuing a, a video featuring unemployed Americans saying they're not speed bumps. Uh, Senator Mitch McConnell on the floor of the Senate yesterday uh, suggested that President Obama uh, was uh, joking about the stimulus not working and that um, Jobs and Competitive Council uh, event in North Carolina uh, when he talked about shovel ready uh, is not as, as shovel ready as, as they had anticipated. Do you guys have any response? Does the White House have any response to this charge? I think it's 
patently obvious that the president is focused on the economy, that he takes enormously seriously the hardship that Americans continue to endure as we emerge from the worst recession uh, most of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. Um, he, uh, one of the reasons why he asked his office to call 10 letters a day for him from the 40,000 that are received by this White House addressed to him every day is because he wanted to, uh, in their own words, read uh, about the, the travails that some Americans are, are going through. And, and especially if you imagine, you know, when he initiated this practice back in uh, the early part of his administration when we were in an economic freefall. Uh, and obviously that hardship continues. The President feels that very keenly. It is why, again, it is the primary focus of his administration, the primary focus of his waking hours. Uh, what he can do, what we can do uh, as an administration, what we can do as Americans, as, as Republicans and Democrats together to continue to grow the economy, continue the positive progress we've made, and, and most importantly, continue to create jobs. I'm sure you saw in the ABC News Washington Post poll last week, President Obama was under 50 percent uh, for the first time I can remember uh, when voters were asked uh, if whether or not he understands the problems of people like them. Are you concerned at all that the President is is conveying the opposite of what you just said? Look, what he does every day is focus on his job and what he can do to help the American people. Uh, you know, polls say a lot of different things. I think that the reality is that when you are worried about losing your job or you've lost your job or you worry about losing your house or your mortgage is underwater, uh, you know, that anxiety is real and understandable, and it affects how you view uh, your own prospects. It affects how you view the overall economy, uh, and it affects how you view your leaders in Washington. And, and understandably, what this president believes is that you know, he came here for a reason, which was to help America, to help uh, change the direction of the country, that, that, uh, and to help specifically given the circumstances, the dire circumstances that were here when he took office, to reverse uh, a catastrophic economic collapse that was unfolding as he moved in. Uh, that work continues. We have changed direction. We are growing. The economy is growing. It is no longer shrinking. We are creating jobs. We've created more than 2.1 private sector jobs, 2.1 million private sector jobs. But that work continues. This recession caused the loss of 8 million jobs. 8 million Americans lost their jobs in this recession. That is a deep hole. And uh, there is no other task that he has been more dedicated to since he took office than to digging us out of that hole or climbing out of that hole. Uh, but the work continues, and that's why he says, we, you know, we're not done. We're a long way from done. Uh, and that's why we have to make the right decisions as we get our deficits under control, as we address our long-term debt, that we do these things, these important things, in, a, in ways that further our potential for economic growth, increase our potential to uh, create jobs, and do not in any way uh, reverse the progress that we've made. Yes? If I could just ask you to respond to uh, specifically to Boehner's remarks today on Libya, where he said we're spending $10 million a day, we're part of an effort to drop bombs on Gaddafi's compounds. It doesn't pass the straight face test, in my opinion, that we're not in the midst of hostilities. Well, I think you uh, have the 30-plus pages uh, that we provided to Congress. Uh, well, no, there's a, there's a substantial amount of material there in answer to all the specific questions that Congress have asked, uh, members of Congress have asked. And, on the, and we simply disagree, and we think that uh, the US, U.S. forces are playing a constrained supporting role in a multinational coalition whose operations are both legitimized by and limited to the terms of a UN Security Council resolution. As we made clear yesterday, we believe US forces are not engaged in the kind of hostilities envisioned by the War Powers Resolution. US operations do not involve a number of elements traditionally associated with hostilities, including sustained fighting or active exchanges of fire with hostile forces, the presence of US ground troops, let me re reiterate, not a single U.S. ground troop in Libya now or ever. U.S. casualties are, uh, they, they also lack U.S. casualties or a serious threat thereof or any significant chance of escalation into a conflict characterized by those factors. Our conclusion, therefore, 
that these constrained and limited operations do not amount to hostilities under the uh, war, uh, war Powers Resolution is consistent with War Powers Resolution interpretations put forward by administrations of both political parties dating back to the statute's 1973 enactment. I think that that is a comprehensive and thorough, thorough legal analysis. Obviously, uh, as, as a lawyer yourself, Chip, you know that there is a long history of uh, legal debate about the War Powers Resolution. We do not expect every person to agree with this. We believe that it is uh, accurate and sound legal analysis. Was the president personally involved in formulating what you just read? Yes. He worked with well, what, what I can say is that he certainly, it is his position, and he worked with uh, White House counsel and his team, and uh, as a constitutional lawyer himself, uh, he is obviously, uh, he owns this document. And it was his decision ultimately, correct. Correct. not Bob Bauer's decision. Correct. Um, Boehner has also called on the president to speak to the American people. Any consideration being given to a speech on this? Not that I'm aware of. Well, I, it, I wouldn't speculate too far into the future, but there are no plans to uh, give a speech on Libya. And uh, on power of the purse, Boehner suggested that ultimately their option may be power of the purse. Concern that Congress could uh, cut off funding for the Libyan Well, as we said in the past, we don't think it's helpful for Congress to send mis mixed messages because I think we all agree, the vast majority of the members of Congress, as well as this administration, this president, that uh, the mission undertaken by uh, this broad coalition, by NATO and other allies, to enforce UN Security Council Resolution 1973 has been important. It has protected Libyan civilians, it has saved thousands of lives, and it has helped put, uh, create space for the Libyan opposition to organize itself, and it has helped put pressure on Gaddafi. Uh, to see the writing on the wall and to ultimately step away from power. I think those are, uh, that success uh, is something that members of Congress, even those who have concern, uh, would uh, acknowledge. And the importance of uh, continuing that mission is, I think, uh, something that a majority of Congress supports. And finally, yesterday you were asked uh, if uh, the President personally believes the War Powers Resolution is constitutional, and you said you couldn't say because you hadn't spoken to the President. Well, I haven't spoken to him about this, but let me just make clear what we are not saying, we are, well, first of all, what we are saying is that this, uh, the, our current actions in Libya or in this mission do not fall under the War Powers Resolution because they do not meet the threshold of hostilities as envisioned by the War Powers Resolution. What, what this uh, reasoning is not saying uh, is that uh, is not addressing the constitutionality of the War Powers Resolution. It is not, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it is a very, it is a limited assessment based on the what we are doing in Libya and how it relates to the War Powers Resolution. It is not an overall analysis, uh, the likes of which we have seen uh, you know, much of over the past uh, many years since the uh, resolution became law. Yes, sir. Uh, on Libya, the attorneys advising the executive branch, did they all agree that this was within the president's uh, authority? Uh, there was a robust debate, as you might expect in this situation. The um, uh, and that led the president to his view that the War Power Resolution 60-day termination provision did not apply here. Uh, you know, but again, going back to what I've said before, this resolution has been this. It would be impossible to have a discussion about the War Powers Resolution uh, in a room of lawyers and not have it be a robust debate because it is a highly uh, debated and debatable resolution. Um, so uh, I don't think that's surprising at all. I hope that answers your question. On the definition of hostilities, if a foreign country were to be lobbing missiles at, say, New York City, is that hostilities? Uh, you know, I'm not going to, I will address the issue here uh, in terms of how it uh, relates to our participation in the multinational coalition in Libya, our extremely circumscribed and limited role in that uh, uh, coalition and the activities that we're engaged in. I'm not going to, not not just because I'm not a lawyer, but partly because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not going to engage in that kind of speculation. One quick other one. Any reaction to Zawahiri taking the lead of al-Qaeda? Uh, certainly not surprising. He was uh, identified prior to the successful mission against Osama bin Laden as uh, al-Qaeda's number two. Uh, it's neither surprising nor does it change some fundamental facts, which is al-Qaeda's ideolo ideology is bankrupt. The fact is that peaceful, movement, peaceful movements for change uh, are the future of the region, and Al-Qaeda is the past. Uh, that was true 
before Osama bin Laden's death, and it's true today. Any plans to send him a congratulatory drone or bunker buster? <laughs> I have no comment on that. Mike. Uh, you're not elucidating any further, as you put it, on uh, the Libya policy. you say elucidating or hallucinating? Uh, <laughs> depends on, is this Friday? No. Uh, <laughs> You're not elucidating any longer uh, your words. Uh, does that mean you're essentially aware of the political and, and legislative dynamic on Capitol Hill? It's essentially, OK, John Boehner, if you want to put a resolution on the floor, you can go ahead and do it. It's not going anywhere in the Senate. We're, we're through talking about it. Well, let me answer as I did to Julie, which is that we will continue to consult with Congress. We will continue to ask, answer Congress's questions as we participate in this mission. Out, we made our legal reasoning clear. Uh, we can restate it, but I don't. Uh, I don't anticipate further legal analysis uh, on this issue from us. Uh, but I do anticipate continued consultations with Congress about the mission. And 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 stepping back uh, to something I haven't mentioned today, which is that we obviously do uh, support uh, a resolution similar to or exactly like the one tabled by uh, put forward by senators. Uh, Kerry and McCain and others, a bipartisan resolution uh, that we uh, would support and agree with. Just to follow up on yesterday on the dead talk, you did specifically endorse the Vice President's deadline, of, I, th I think it's July 1st or 4th, uh, to have something concrete put forward. Do you, does the President agree that that, that that is a viable deadline? I, I think the Vice President is leading these talks. What, 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 what he says represents where we are on these talks, so I have no I'm not disagreeing with anything he said. But you're not specifically endorsing I it either, which means open the question. I endorse what the Vice President said. Okay. And finally, uh, yesterday at the congressional picnic, the pool cameras caught a, uh, some video of, of the speaker, well known to be a smoker. I believe he prefers camels. Um, the President, I assume. I was a Marlboro Light guy. Okay, I assume uh, the President is still uh, abstaining from uh, tobacco smoke. Will the President ask him when they golf together? to not smoke, and will, does the venue where they're going to be golfing allow smoke? I, have no, I don't know about the venue. I'm sure that you know, the, the president will be a, uh, a fine host, and you know, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't foresee a problem. Yeah. Carol. Uh, do you have a, what's the White House's reaction to the, the ethanol subsidies vote that's going to take place in the Senate? Well, uh, we oppose the full repeal of, uh, of that subsidy, but as you know, we are focused and have been focused on uh, a broad strategy, including increasing domestic development of uh, oil and gas, but also uh, aggressive development of alternative fuels, including biofuels, uh, and also improving our efficiency, our fuel efficiency. The, uh, and, we, and, and as part of our overall strategy, we would like to see reform that would reduce costs in terms of the uh, subsidy in question here, but not we were not we did not support the full repeal. Mr. Noll, do you know what the venue is for the Saturday golf game? Uh, I do. If we, I, if we haven't put it out, I'm not going to announce it from here. I'll then my lips are sealed. Were you discussing the golf game with uh, Speaker Boehner yesterday in your chat with him? <laughs> I, you know, we discussed a lot of things. I've known. Uh, Speaker Boehner for a long time since I covered Congress in the mid '90s. Uh, and consider him, uh, you know, uh, a friend, and uh, enjoy had an enjoyable conversation. And the legal arguments in the uh, Libya document yesterday are those the same legal arguments that Justice will use in answering the uh, lawsuit filed yesterday by members well, I, of Congress. I don't. I don't want to prescribe how lawyers might, uh, to a actions they might take, but I, I certainly think the legal reasoning we put forward yesterday, the analysis we put forward yesterday would be a foundation for, uh, for a response. Just to follow up on Karen's question, is the President receiving any special briefings on the Greek debt crisis right now? He has been briefed uh, specifically on it, uh, uh, I, not that I'm aware of today, although he did get, uh, as part of his overall briefing, I'm sure it included a paper on, on, on Greece. but I. Uh, I mean, he may have gotten something specific on Greece today. I'm just not sure. Okay. And also, any uh, updates on the government reorganization plans and when that might be released? Uh, yes, I can. Um, I do have something on that. The, uh, as you know, the president called for a reorganization of the government in his State of the Union address 
uh, because he believes that government should be retooled to meet the needs of the 21st century. Uh, this set of recommendations is part of an overall effort to streamline government, cut waste and duplication, increase effectiveness so that we can create a system that will help Americans and businesses compete. The analysis, options and recommendations were submitted to the President by uh, Jeff Zients and Lisa Brown uh, on uh, June 9th as directed. The President will review the rec recommendations uh, submitted to him over the summer and discuss them with his team. Uh, and when he completes his review, I expect he will make a public statement about it. Does that mean the review isn't expected to be completed until the fall? Or I don't want to put a timeline on it. The submission of the recommendations was uh, made on June 9th as, uh, as directed by the President. The President will review it over the summer, so sometime uh, within the post-review period, I'm sure he will, uh, as he meets with his team, uh, you know, make a public statement about the recommendations. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the roadmap between the meeting today on the Hill with the Vice President and July 1st? I anticipate more meetings. I don't have an announcement uh, yet to make on, on when those meetings will take place, but, uh, you know, we continue to look to intensify the, uh, the process. Uh, as you, deliberately, we've been unspecific about the progress that has been made, but, but uh, uh, consistent in describing what has transpired as progress, and, and not just us, but, but other participants. And we continue, we continue to believe that, uh, that they've made important progress in those, in those uh, negotiations and, and uh, are optimistic about the prospect of, uh, of an agreement. Back to the Petraeus meeting, what's the rationale for waiting a day to acknowledge that and the fact that there was a national meeting security meeting happened conference? after uh, after the briefing. I was asked yesterday it hadn't happened. I, I mean, you seem to repeatedly stress that this is not part of a wholesale reevaluation of strategy. Are you, I mean, are you trying to purposely like downplay this whole notion that we're going to get a big announcement? Big no, speech coming. no, no, no. But what I'm, what I, what I, what I think happened is that I'm just simply saying because people, uh, most folks here, reported on uh, that rather unique and unprecedented process that the president oversaw and initiated, initiated and oversaw back in the fall of 2009, and I, I simply didn't want people to expect a uh, repeat of that unique and unprecedented. Uh, that's probably redundant, but you know, unprecedented uh, process. So uh, that, that's all. Not, not, I'm not trying to downplay it. We think it is very significant that he is doing what he said he would do. To some degree of skepticism back when he announced this policy, remember the, the inclusion of the July 2011 date as the beginning of a drawdown of those surge forces that he was sending into Afghanistan uh, was viewed by some, in some quarters, as uh, not serious. It was deadly serious, and the president is doing, as he tends to do, exactly what he said he would do. And he uh, is implementing the policy and the strategy that he put in place in December of 2009. That strategy has met with some significant success, uh, and uh, uh, he is reviewing the situation and will make an announcement relatively soon, as he said, about uh, the pace and uh, slope of the drawdown that will begin next month. I'll ask again because I've been asked several times already today, is the President still intending to have a, some sort of formal speech to present this, you know, the, the particulars of the, uh, the, the, the immediate drawdown and the early stages of the plan ahead? Well, when you say still intends to, I don't know that we've ever suggested that he would make a formal speech. I, you know, we haven't decided yet on the, f the, f the venue or the format uh, by which he will make the announcement, but he will, sp he will address it. He will in his own words. I, I'm confident of that, but I don't have an announcement about venue or form. Jay, why was, the, and? Why was the Petraeus meeting on the schedule? Uh, not every meeting the President has is on his uh, public schedule, as you might expect. Something like that is on the schedule. Not all of them. But I... I but your routine I, National Security Council meetings in the sit room typically are on the schedule. The monthly, right? are, the monthly meetings are. The, the weekly meetings with Secretary uh, uh, Gates, Secretary Clinton are, but not all the meetings he has are. This was not a this was an additional meeting to the to the routine meetings, and we didn't put it on the schedule. But I'm, uh, at, when asked, I've uh, I've answered the fact that he did have this meeting. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, on, on Libya, what happens now? You say the president disagrees with Congress. Speaker Boehner says he wants an answer tomorrow on whether the Office of Legal Counsel agrees with this assessment. Of the president, you say you're not going to give any more legal assessment to Congress. 
What happens in a deadlock like that? Who wins? Does the president win? Well, look, I, I think the the important thing here is not about who wins in terms of partisan politics, and it's about no, does the does, policy. Well, we are continuing with the mission uh, and our participation in it. We continue to consult with Congress. We continue to uh, answer questions when they have them. Uh, we have provided the legal analysis that uh, uh, was sent yesterday to Congress. And, and, and uh, this, the process moves forward. And I think as I answered in a response to a question from Mike, we, we would uh, support and endorse the uh, a vote on the uh, resolution put forward by, the bipartisan resolution put forward by Senators McCain and Kerry and others. And, uh, you know, and, and, and so we continue. And, and the important thing is that we understand what, 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 what is happening in Libya, the tremendous progress we've made, the fact that the President has done exactly what he said he would do, again, to some degree of skepticism evinced by the very people I'm looking at now, that he would uh, do what he said he would do, which is have the United States military take the lead in this operation in the initial days because of our unique capabilities, and then within days and not weeks, the U.S. would step back and other partners would take the lead in this mission. That is what happened, and it has been true ever since. Uh, he said that there would not be U.S. ground forces in Libya. Uh, he meant what he said. And uh, he has said that our mission there is uh, described by and limited by United Nations Security Council Resolution 1973. Uh, and he meant what he said. So this mission continues, and it continues to be successful. It saved thousands of lives, presented, prevented what was likely to be a massacre in Benghazi. It has given uh, time and space to the opposition to organize, an opposition that we have worked uh, increasingly closely with as we have uh, gotten to know it and dealt with it. Uh, we have worked hard to free up funds uh, that have been frozen, that uh, Qaddafi regime funds, so that the opposition can use those funds uh, uh, for assistance. And uh, we believe that the Libyan people will have the opportunity to decide their future, their political future. So current military policy, the president won't budge. Again, I, I can't improve upon the substantial report that we sent to Congress yesterday. And, and you know, we are continuing with our supporting role in that mission. Yes, Abby. Putting aside the legal justification for just a second, um, the report says that the mission is current, has cost about $700 million mm -hmm. up until this point. It projects that by September it will be up to $1.1 billion. That's a lot of money in the context of the budget cutting and uh, trimming of programs that already exist. How do you justify that to the American people and when? Well, I think the President has, has said justified it clearly in terms of why it is in the uh, interest of the United uh, States to participate in this mission in the, in the form that he is, uh, part has, has our forces participating in it. It is also important to note that the money that you mentioned uh, is coming from existing funds. There is no request for a supplemental, and it is, fun it is, fun it is money that would have been spent on other things like uh, training missions that uh, are being fulfilled by the actual missions being uh, performed. Uh, so this, this is not new money. Uh, and uh, we believe that it continues to be in U.S. Uh, interest to participate in this mission uh, in the limited manner that we are participating in it because uh, it is in our interest within this multinational coalition to continue to protect Libyan, Libyan civilians, to continue to enforce a no-fly zone and an arms embargo uh, to give the opposition the time and space that it needs to organize going to be that we'll be operating in the same capacity until September? I, I can't predict the future. So it, it, it obviously uh, a lot depends on what's happening on the ground. But NATO recently, I think in the last couple of weeks, extended its mission uh, for uh, 90 days. Is that correct? 90 days. Uh, and obviously we are participants in that mission. But to, to anticipate what Libya will look like in September is something I'm not prepared to do cost something that President Obama is considering when he's making decisions about how involved? Um, uh, I think that President Obama made the decision about the level of our participation based on a number of factors in, 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 regarding our serving the American people's best interests and our best national security interests. And uh, one thing that is certainly factually true is that the limited nature of our participation has reduced the cost of it. Uh, more importantly, in terms of its success, the multinational nature of the mission has ensured that this has not been something that the United States owns. 
that it is a broad coalition, including Arab partners, that are responsible for this, that decided collectively to take this action. And we believe that doing it in that way enhances the prospects of a positive outcome for Libya. April. Jay, um, uh, two questions. One on the economy. Um, last week, the Labor Department came out with a report, the Black Labor Force in the Recovery. And um, the Secretary, Labor Secretary, said the President and the Vice President did see this report. What next? What's the next step as the Black Labor Force has been hurting for decades in this country? No question. And, and uh, this is a matter of, of, of significant concern to this administration, uh, it, as is the overall situation with employment. Unemployment is too high. We are working every day uh, to bring it down, to make sure that Americans who are looking for jobs, uh, minorities and, and non-minorities who are looking for jobs, can find them. So uh, this is, this is, there is no higher priority here. And, uh, and we are working hard to address uh, overall our economic growth and our job creation. And also um, on the other question, on the War Powers Act, the President wants to keep calm waters between the branches. Why didn't he just make, have a conversation, just say, look, this is what we're intending? Why didn't he do that to Congress? The President has consulted with Congress on this. His, his members of his team have consulted regularly on Congress. Uh, with Congress on, on Libya. Uh, you know, again, I think uh, this is now uh, somewhat stale, so the number, the number of engagements is higher, uh, but more than 40 occasions that this administration has engaged with Congress on Libya, both in closed and open session, larger and smaller meetings, and in, in direct consultations, uh, and we will continue to do that. So the President has had this discussion, and, and members of his team have had this discussion with Congress. All right, I will quantify it. More than 40 occasions prior to the action. In the no, 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 no. Prior to, I mean, it, since the action, and including uh, prior to it, but within the context of the action. But what I'm saying again is, why didn't he just, in efforts to, to stay above the fray and to keep peace, why didn't he just go to Congress and say, look, this is what I'm thinking about doing. I want to join it. Well, he did. He did have, he did, he did have, as you know, have leaders down here before the mission began, first of all. Second of all, the president's goal is not to keep the peace and stay above the fray. That is not the mission of his presidency. He saw an urgent need that needed to be addressed, an imminent massacre, uh, a unique set of circumstances that allowed for a broad multinational coalition that was willing to take action, uh, a significant resolution passed by the United Nations Security Council, uh, and that uh, those factors combined to uh, lead the president to believe that he took that he took that the action he took was the right action to take, uh, and he consulted with Congress about it. Yes, sir. See. Jay, you, twice you said that Congress shouldn't send mixed messages on Libya. Why not? Well, because I think that it is important that, uh, well, first of all, because I think Congress does share our goals in, uh, broadly, our goals in Libya, and that it's important to uh, make it clear to Gaddafi and others that that, that unity of goal, in terms of the shared goals, exists. And, uh, we are not in any way suggesting that Congress shouldn't express its opinion or, or have these discussions, and we are in these uh, consultations regularly. But I think that uh, it, it's just a broad point that uh, if that we, sh we share these goals, we have consulted regularly, we've answered these questions, we understand there are concerns, and we continue to answer those concerns. Well, question. Congress is right to ask questions about it. What's the mixed message? I think that, that they are sending more than one message about uh, how they view Libya, about our, our whether whether our, our goals are the right ones and how we achieve them. Um, but again, I don't want to suggest that, and I'm not, that, that they are not well within their rights to express concern or objections and raise questions. I wanted to ask Sam, uh, and I just I wanted to ask you if you noted that Josh Beckett had a ma masterful performance yeah. yesterday, a one-hitter with uh, 97 yeah. pitches and yeah, uh, a shutout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I supposed to ask No, no, that's question all. Now? I just wanted to make sure you <laughs> I thought maybe I thought maybe they were playing this afternoon because I saw your head down. Maybe you were uh, no, no. No, 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 I'm updating my fantasy team. Um, <laughs> can I can I ask a question? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, before you refer me to the Department of Justice, um, <laughs> Senator Lonberg sent a letter to the White House yesterday uh, expressing disapproval with uh, the lack of action on gun policy from this administration and calling for more presidential leadership, not Department of Justice leadership. So I'm wondering what the reaction is from the White House. 
And how do you push back against the notion that nothing's been done on guns when the record showed that nothing has been done on guns? Well, can I refer you to the Justice Department? No, no you cannot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not aware of the letter, so I, I don't have a reaction to it, uh, uh, Sam. So um, I think you know the president did have an op-ed about uh, gun, gun policy uh, in, in the wake of the, the terrible shooting in Arizona. I don't have an update for you on on, on the actions that, that we've taken. Hey, my ears in the gun. Can I, can I email you the letter and get a reaction later, perhaps? You are welcome to do that. Thanks. John Christopher. Uh, last night. UK Chancellor George Osborne endorsed a plan to separate retail banking from investment banking activities as part of response to the global financial crisis. Since the U.S. is a part of the same global financial marketplace, does this administration believe this may affect competition between the U.S. and the U.K. in the financial services market? Uh, that's a kind of question that I think Treasury Department is best uh, suited to answer, so I refer you to the Treasury Department, especially on the second part. On the, overall, I think it's important for us to note that as uh, countries around the globe uh, have dealt with uh, the uh, crisis that occurred in 2008, the, the f uh, financial sector crisis, and then the, the recession that ensued, uh, obviously uh, you know, every country is different and the way they deal with it is different. We have, uh, at the President, with, because of the President's leadership, took a very significant action to uh, pass uh, financial reforms, financial sector reforms, and, and uh, we, you know, we continue to implement those. Um, but again, each country uh, addresses these issues differently. Has this kind of thing been discussed with the, with the PM, the Prime Minister Cameron? Not that I'm aware of. Thank you, sir. Toshi. I have a question on job creation. On Monday, at Cree in North Carolina, the President laid out the new initiative to train 10,000 new American engineers mm -hmm. to compete against the other countries. And could you elaborate a little bit how it, work, it will work and also how we will it is, uh, it is said that the, it's a private sector-led initiative, but mm -hmm. with, how will the government will be involved? I mean, will the gov government provide any fund or will not provide anything? I believe it is a private sector initiative that we support. I, it, I, why don't you come up to me? I, I do have, it's, it's, you know, the way this job works on Monday, I could have told you so many things about that, and now it's been displaced by Libya and other things. You know, my, my bandwidth uh, being uh, limited. So, uh, but, but you're correct that it is a private sector initiative. Uh, and look, we are looking for ways, you know, that, that uh, actions the government can take, actions the private sector can take. Uh, you know, these are, this is uh, an all hands on deck situation as it has been since the moment we took, uh, we, we came to, to, to the White House. So, uh, you know, we were, the President was very encouraged by uh, the Jobs Council meeting and the ideas uh, that, that were generated there, I think two dozen ideas, uh, many of them uh, very promising, he thinks, and uh, th that, that was just one of them. Uh, George. Uh, thank you. Uh, you just mentioned your personal friendship, Speaker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in this week of golf games and picnics, can you talk about the value of I have no plans to you know, play golf with anybody, <laughs> frankly. But. T talk about the value of building personal relationships between the President and, and leaders from the other party in Congress. Look, I think he, and I've addressed this before, he feels that it is a very useful thing to do. That, that uh, and I know the Vice President, whom I also work for and, and, and worked more directly for uh, in the past, feels very strongly about this too, that, that part of uh, what's happened in Washington has been that the, uh, you know, the normal human interactions you have with people that you might disagree with on policy have uh, become far and fewer between. And, uh, that that's not uh, particularly helpful for constructive dialogue. Because uh, we have big issues and the nature uh, that we need to solve. And the nature of our system is that uh, for better or worse, and we think for better because uh, we think it's, a, it, it's, it's an awfully good system, the American system, it requires bipartisan cooperation to get anything significant done. Uh, that is almost always the case. And it is certainly the case when you have uh, one party in the White House and, and the other party in control of, of one or both houses of Congress. So uh, these kinds of meetings, this kind of communication are, I think, very helpful. They don't uh, necessarily produce tangible prog progress on legislation, but they do produce the potential for a better atmosphere in the room when important things are discussed and negotiated. So that's, that's why the President uh, has uh, in encouraged the kind of uh, encounters that he's uh, had with members of Congress, with leadership, with Speaker Boehner and Senator McConnell, for example, as well as Democrats, why he asked uh, the uh, conferences and caucuses of each House to come to the White House, 
uh, earlier this year and why he uh, invited the speaker to play golf uh, this weekend. Thanks, Does it make it easier for him to cut through his staff and just pick up the phone and call uh, somebody like the yes. speaker? For no question. No question. Okay. Thanks very much. I know uh, you guys got somewhere to go, 2 o'clock, right?